What's up? I'm Noelle at Noelle's Notions, and this is Fame by the Flame with Yevo. Tsunami Gang, what's good? Hey, so all the way from the Yay area, right? Yay Coming Yay down area. to City of Trees. Yeah, City of Trees, man. It's my hometown. Yeah. My hometown. I, so before we get into everything that you have going on, um, I want to start with your, your past and most importantly, like your name. So where did that come from? Because it's very creative and unique. Uh, unique? Well, I'm originally from Sacramento. I was born okay. out here, uh, raised in the Oak Park neighborhood. Um, yes, you know, it's where Mozzie's from. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I grew up on 2nd Avenue. He's from 4th Avenue. So, I mean, that's that's where I came from. But I moved to the uh, Bay Area when I was young, uh, about like 11 years old, okay. 12 years old. So, yeah, just that happened years ago, actually. So, um I was gonna say so like you know Yevo right like did that, did someone name you that did you kind of come up with that on your own like and especially too because you have the sphinx now right it's like your mm. main kind of like yeah, spirit yeah. animal let's yeah, say right spirit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sphinx, so sphinx. like why is that you know what gravitated you towards you know and maybe if not the name like the animal <clears throat> um so going back to uh, my name yeah uh, Yevo is actually uh the initials of my real name so my oh, wow. name so okay. AVO and I, I live in the Yay area, so Might I just as combined well, right? them both. <laughs> made Yevo, so and the Sphinx. Well, I, the reason why I came up with the Sphinx for my logo is that you know out in Egypt, Sphinxes or cats in general are uh, are worshipped. Yeah. Know? So they're very, you know, they're looked upon as like a god or something. Yeah. So I kind of, you know, wanted that to represent my brand. You know, yeah. something very powerful and big, bigger yeah. than life. You know. Yeah. Well, and you know, your music is definitely that. I mean, you start out like you said you start out kind of humble beginnings in sack and definitely have blown up to where you're at now where you're dropping new music every single friday right yes every friday yes. i drop a song every friday so i drop one on itunes apple music every friday promote it on instagram put it on twitter Facebook, yeah. everything and it's also known as friday right yeah i call it friday <laughs> friday releases yeah. yeah 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 um and so you know out of all because you release a lot of content right obviously you're you know when you're in the studio kind of that's not songs but is there a song maybe even from when you first kind of started out or maybe even your most recent that you really just connect with or that you think fans should hear as like a summary of kind of you of an artist a summary summary of me as an artist um well there used to be a song called ages of my life that i made but that was okay. like 2008 ish okay it's, uh, so it's like way so it's back. way back it's a yeah. way back song yeah. but it really does summarize my life it talks about you know my life out here it talks about my life uh, growing up in the Bay Area and just kind of sums up like what I went through as an individual yeah. and as an artist. Yeah. So that's a really good song. People just search up Ages of My Life, awesome. um, Yevo, and uh, you'll see that. But recently, like a song that I do connect yeah. with really a lot is uh, Fraudulent. I made a song called Fraudulent. It just talks about how people show fake love to you, yeah. you know, talk behind your back and stuff. And... Uh, you know, you just can't really trust a lot of people in yeah. this, you know, industry or even out in life in just, general, yeah. you know what I mean? What so. I was going to say, is that an experience that you've kind of come across in terms of it? Because I know that people, when they travel a lot or move a lot, you kind of have to always, like, make new friends or, like, get involved in new things, you know? And so you kind of develop this ability to do so, but at the same time, kind of like a, you know, suspiciousness of, like, all these new people, all these new vibes, right? Right, yeah. I mean, it's like recently I've just been doing more nightlife stuff. So okay. it's kind of being out in the night flight, nightlife scene is is different than being, like you know, in the studio with somebody or mm -hmm. getting a coffee or something with somebody. Yeah. It's just different types of people. Yeah. So I'm not really used to those kinds of people. They do a little bit different stuff than a normal yeah. person would yeah. do, you know what I mean? Well, I was going to say sex, drugs, and rock and roll, right? Exactly, so it's yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. It's like, it's you know, right. it's their their version of kind of reality is a little bit different than somebody who makes moves during the day, per right. se, with, like, everybody else. Right, right. So, you know, what is, again, guess then your favorite part and maybe your least favorite part about the music industry or just the nightlife in general? My, my favorite part about the uh, industry is creating. It's just okay. creating, being in the studio and just, you know, letting my thoughts roam wild and yeah. just get on, make a beat and just start just flowing to it. You know, don't even mm -hmm. think about it. If you start forcing it, I feel like you're not going to get your best work, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. So I don't, if I'm making a beat or I'm making a song and I'm staying too focused on it, I feel like I'm trying to force it. So instead mm -hmm. of forcing it, I just try to fill it in the first five, ten minutes. Awesome. Okay. You know what I mean? And so as I say, is that how you kind of come up with your most 
like touching songs a sense is that it's just an expression of your emotion like raw emotion you know instead of like oh let me like jot this down like I think it varies actually okay. so sometimes I'll, it, it'll be a mood thing like if I if I feel feeling angry at the moment I try to make something to get the anger out mm -hmm. or if I'm feeling like man I should make a party song or something yeah. I'm feeling cool or if I'm a little drunk or something make some <laughs> so you know turn some up. turn yeah. up some, some. Yeah. so it's like I do really what's what I'm feeling in, in the moment. Um, sometimes I try to, you know, sometimes I'll take a more strategic, you know, approach if I want to be more lyrical and stuff. But but most more recently I've been ch taking the more um, just feeling approach, more raw, as you say. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And so, you know, with your creative process, you, like you said, you're kind of taking more of like the raw approach, but I'm sure there is a part to it that's more strategic in terms of like the way you release your songs or things like that. So like when you're, do you have any, I guess like pre-show rituals or like pre-studio routines when you go in to start creating? Yeah. Um, my routine, I mean, go inside, I, I open my laptop, make a beat. So I'll make a beat. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'll start singing. First, uh, I won't even, like, uh, write anything. I'll just okay. literally speak gibberish, but make <laughs> melodies. So, like, okay. You know, just literally yeah. speaking gibberish, making melodies. And then once I'm done with uh, with that, I'll start, if I feel like, oh, yeah, this melody's catchy or something, then I'll write, um, I'll write actual lyrics on top of that melody and make a song out of that. Got it, uh, okay. And then after that, export the song and then I'll send it to my distributor get it ready for my Friday release and yeah that's basically what I do Dope. every week okay yeah. and so yeah how has it been different because I mean let's let's take it back a little bit how how long have you been involved in music or like had a passion for creating artistically you know sound sound um I've been into music for over a decade now okay. so I've been I've been making on the microphone for about yeah, 13 years. I would wow. say 13 years been, been on the mic. Um, I was on the microphone for the first time when I was 12 years old. So that was my first experience ever being on a microphone. Um, but I've always been wanting to do music since I've been like seven, eight. Wow. Like this okay. is something I knew I always wanted to do. Yeah. And I was influenced mostly by Tupac, Biggie, okay. Snoop Dogg, yeah. Dr. Dre. So I all always, yeah, all yeah. the OGs. I always aspired to be like those guys. So um, that's definitely something that inspired. They, they're the ones that really yeah. inspired me to keep doing music and stuff. And I started at a, a at a, a early time frame too, okay. early two thousands. Yeah. So when G Unit and stuff came out, so I was making my music during the hyphy movement mm -hmm. and all that. So um, yeah, uh, it's been it's been a journey. It's been a journey, yeah. and then uh, I learned how to produce as well. So I don't only write. And yeah, rap, it's actually also, now the full, yeah, yeah the, the full, full like comp composition and then full completion. Composition. Yep. Yeah, I make the beat, I make some master, awesome. everything, make the sounds, everything. So that's my, I make the whole process and stuff. So what is like you know what would you say is your purpose in creating music? My purpose in creating my purpose in creating music is to share my thoughts and my expressions and to show people in the world that it's okay to be a creator. Okay. It's, it's something you should do. It's a therapy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a therapy. I feel like all the young kids out there, like if they really want to do this, to go all out in yeah. it. And don't let anybody stop them, you know, from doing this. Either. Yeah. Because I feel like it's just, it's just therapeutic. It's something yeah. I want to do. I love it. I've, it's my, it's my passion. And I feel that. I could definitely accomplish this dream that I have yeah. in the music industry. Well, to your point, it's like being your most authentic self. Right. You know, like basically making sure that you're presenting to the world what you want the world to see, and that's the most truest version of you. Right. So, you know, with all the music that you create, right, you definitely have a creative process that drives you. You have kind of the sustainability of you wanting to spread your voice, you want to make this impact on the world. Um, but, you know, I'm curious... You do expose a lot with your music, but what is something that maybe fans don't know about you? Fans don't know. Yeah, or maybe know. that, or maybe that would surprise most people to find out about you. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm a very you know humble guy. I would say humble. I'm very uh, simple, basic person. I'm not really too wild. Mm -hmm. I don't like to go out, you know, party, do all the crazy stuff all the yeah. time. Um, not not into drugs at all. You know, I'm very 
just a calm like cool even keel guy yeah, yeah yeah just like yeah yeah you know, just a kind of like a homebody but at the same time i'm i'm, I'm definitely uh i'm definitely uh I, I definitely can know how to have fun with people. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah. you know, it's funny. The more people that I interview, I realize that a lot of creatives like yourself are honestly kind of introverted. Yeah. Like more so right. that, you know, the the reason why they create this music and this sound is, is in a way to express themselves because normally in everyday life situations, they may not feel so comfortable like going out and expressing themselves. Yeah. Do you find that kind of true with yourself yeah, as definitely. well? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I feel uh, I, I could be introverted at, uh, at times, but... You know, when I'm comfortable with people, I could definitely be an extrovert and yeah. be the life of the party yeah. down there, you know? So. Well, I saw your uh, footage from you events. You yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you see me, yeah, just rocking the mic yeah. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, even <laughs> shout-outs to uh, Basic and Floor. Yeah, they yeah. they run you events. Awesome. Those are my homies right there. Yeah, so so you do go out and party now have a good time. I do, it's I, just, I, do, you're I like, do. You're like, I only, get pull, I only pull up if I'm getting paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I only, <laughs> only, only pull up to just, you know, have a good time with the fans and, yeah. you know, and my, my people. People, yeah so. well so what's like an everyday situation for you because i know like a lot of people think that artists are like these like ungodly or whatever like type you right but like to me like the music is what's ungodly or right. what's godlike in terms of that like you're it's it's a higher representation of like a frequency but your everyday life is usually pretty like go to the grocery store you know yeah, you do yeah, this yeah. right so like you know what is kind of like an everyday look like for you everyday thing with me is uh well, full time dad actually. So oh wow! Day, Congrats. Wait, yeah, thank you. Yeah. So I mean, wake up in the morning, take daughter to school, mm -hmm. um, go to work. You know, so I mean, music's my patch. So I do music yeah. full time. So yeah. that's usually what I do. Um, go home, spend family day. You know, it's, yeah. it's always a family day, and after the family day, I hit the studio and create. Yeah. And I'm in there till like three, and I do that all week, all week. So yeah. Rinse and repeat, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rinse and repeat, do the same thing. Um, <laughs> would you say that, like, you know, in this kind of cycle of, like, just doing all these different things, right? Like, you're not only progressing as an individual, but you're progressing as an artist, right? right. So to say, you know, so the song you produced five years back may not best represent you now, right? Mm. It's safe to say that, you know, music five years from now would probably be, like, a larger progression as well. Right. So where do you see yourself in five years as an artist? Or as a producer or as an individual in the music industry? I definitely see me leaving a, like, a stamp in the music industry so, in five years. I definitely see myself up there with the top tier people. Um, definitely well respected in the music mm -hmm. industry. I feel like I'm definitely, you know, I'm there. I feel like I'm there. If not already there right now. Yeah. So I feel like I'm definitely will have an impact on a lot of upcoming artists as well and upcoming producers. Awesome. You know. What, um, you know, speaking of five years forward, you know, and kind of you laying the tracks now, right, to create that future for yourself, um, what, do you, what would you say are songs that are in your repertoire right now that are really building the foundation for that? So, like, what songs are kind of your favorite or songs that you feel like are really groundbreaking for the... the the sound honestly that you're trying to create like the image and the brand for yourself i would definitely say my my single tsunami right okay. now that's i mean that that song has really built my confidence in the music industry and definitely has gotten a reaction out of people mm -hmm. i mean it's a very catchy song the chorus is catchy it's fun mm -hmm. people love it i mean it has over two hundred thousand views on youtube yeah. right now it's doing well on spotify it's definitely a song that um, kind of changed my perspective on how I should ma create music. Well, and how and, so? Um, definitely, you know, just being, just having fun with it, having okay. fun, being more open, just don't, don't, don't give a fuck about anything. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So like just, fuck everybody. Yeah, fuck everybody. Just, <laughs> just be, just be, just be yourself and just yeah. be free. You know? Yeah. yeah. So that's really tsunami. Definitely, uh, opened my mind. Like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta start tapping into this crowd mm -hmm. of people a little bit, you know? Well, and to that point, do you have any advice then for people who are coming up in the music industry now or look to you as an example for, like, a wave that they want to create? Right. I'll tell a lot of artists, don't give up. Just okay. just keep pushing, keep working. It's all about the work at the end of the day. We don't need a fake stunt. We don't need a, you know, oh, yeah, I'm in the studio or mm -hmm. get caught up in the lifestyle, you know? Yeah. Some people get caught up in the light life, they get caught up in the girls, they get caught up in the spending the money. Mm -hmm. Definitely focus on the craft mm -hmm. and work. 
keep yeah. your close people close and make sure you can trust those people as well. Yeah, well, and I mean, for you too, especially, I feel like family is a really big influence for definitely. you. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. And even sometimes family might not even support what you yeah. do, you know? So you definitely got to just keep going and going and don't let anybody or anybody stop you. It's all, it's all yourself. Yeah. Actually. It's a battle with yourself, I would say. Well, yeah. And, you know, to that point, it's like when you don't have those people that are closest to you putting you on, you're kind of like, well, man, like, like, am I that good? Like, am I that yeah. great? Like, you kind of, it get, kind of eats at you. So, to your point, like, you have to be your biggest fan. You, you have got, to be you your number to. one fan. You got to like, be your biggest fan. You have to. You got to just keep pushing and pushing. Forget all the negative comments. Mm -hmm. Just, just focus on the positive and just, yeah. just, just keep pushing. That's all I said. Work and work. Just yeah, work. right. It's just, just work. It all comes, <laughs> it all comes down to the work, you know? Yeah. And, um. Uh, Definitely just, you know, getting your message across yeah. and sending it to people, even if only one or ten people listen to your stuff, mm -hmm. just keep going and going and yeah. it'll happen. So what are you most looking forward to um, in terms of where you see yourself going in the industry? In the industry, where I look, I look very forward to working with like top tier people, people that yeah. I've looked up to, yeah. like big but, people like Dr. Dre, you yeah. know, uh, Snoop Dogg, um, even like the new guys, you know, like Travis Scott, mm -hmm. even like, you know, Kanye and just those type of people, other creatives, people mm -hmm. that are just as passionate as I am in yeah. the music industry. Yeah. So that's definitely I, what I see myself where looking in the future. Yeah. Well, you're definitely on your way. I know I, you, yeah, every time I pull up on your page, you're like posting something new, you're at right. some type of event, like you're, you're really heavily promoting, like not just yourself on some like narcissistic right. stuff, but yourself in terms of like. I know that I have a passion for this music. I know that I have something that people want to hear, and I want to speak my truth and my voice, and as many people that can tap in, like, please do. Yeah, right. And yeah. so to that effect, I mean, what's the best way to fan, for fans to connect with you? Best way to connect with me is definitely through Instagram, definitely. Twitter, Facebook, definitely anything on social media. Okay. So I'm on everything, Yavo. Just hit me up, and, I mean, I try to get back to everybody I can. Yeah, so I'm, yeah. Definitely very reachable. Yeah, so flood his DMs, you guys. Yeah, flood it, <laughs> flood it, flood it. <laughs> well, and I know you did a show um, sponsored with, or partnership with Univision, right, out in Miami. Yeah. Um, and so that's crazy because I'm, I'm assuming it's kind of a collab with, you know, like your background, right, as being yeah. um, Latino descent. Right, yeah, uh, definitely. Um, with I uh, definitely did that with my, um, my friend Aaron Bowden. He's a very close friend of mine. He's from Honduras. He's an upcoming Latino singer. Okay. So he definitely wanted to get me involved and yeah. feel out the Miami. It's my yeah, first time say, out there. I was going to say, what better way yeah, than Miami? Yeah, Miami. Like, come on. Yeah, going with, uh, i never been out there. Yeah. So it's my first time out there. And awesome. It was awesome, definitely. Great experience. Yeah. Well, and I'm sure, you know, you'll continue to work with um, companies like that as well to capitalize on, like, you know, just the culture. Because I feel like... Um, you know, when you come from a background, um, you definitely that comes through in your music, whether that be of African descent, of European descent, of Native American, you know, any, any, you know, whatever. It's like that kind of, that vibe carries through to music. Do you right. feel like you have kind of, like, are there songs that maybe have more of like that kind of like Latino flair? Latino flair. Yeah. yeah, I would say yeah. I have I have a couple songs that uh, I have that Latino flair. Like I have a song called Mia Moore that I okay. did. I've done Tsunami has a little bit of mm -hmm. that Latino flair. Um, there's a couple in there. I'm not really too focused on it as okay. I think I should be. Well, I was going to say, because, mm -hmm. I mean, it's really big right now, the new wave of kind of right. like, you know, before it was almost like hip-hop and EDM. Mm -hmm. Then it was like hip-hop and country. And then now I feel like it's more like hip-hop and like, you know, more of the like Latino or like even like Jamaican kind of like stuff. Yeah. More of like the like the rhythm stuff. Yeah, yeah, like yeah definitely. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely, I mean, I'm definitely going to make more music like that too. I, I mean, I can speak Spanish, so I know yeah. Spanish, so it's nothing that I, I can't do. Mm -hmm. It's just something that I probably just haven't tapped into yeah. because I, I'm not around it as much. You yeah. know what I mean? That's more like Miami style and stuff. Yeah. So hanging out with my friend Aaron Bowden from Miami, yeah. I'm starting to kind of understand that, that yeah. vibe and being out there, it even shows me even more. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, it's like you can only base, um, you know, your 
life on the experiences that you've had. So it's like once right. you have those experiences, then you can kind of garner that into like the new music you're putting out or even just the way that you make moves like in the world, I think. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, and you know, I'm curious because, you know, now you're making moves as not only an artist, but a producer, but you weren't always kind of like that duo, right? So yeah. how did you start, how did you get into producing or how, you know, doing beats? Basically, I mean, what I, what I did is, uh, uh, I, uh, used to watch my old producer, so my original producer, okay. his name is uh, Victor, so he goes by Vito Beats, he's from San Francisco, um, I used to watch him a lot, so when he used to produce my music, um, I used to be in a group called Young Loyal Fellows with another guy, so we used to just rap, we would write and rap mm -hmm. on his beats while he'd be on the DAW just creating mm -hmm. beats and all the instruments, and I always found it, like, found it very interesting, like, I'm like, wow, like, he's creating music, like, I, I want to do that sometime, yeah. you know? I remember I just picked up a DAW one day, and uh, I just started messing around. I didn't even know what tempo was. Oh, wow, okay. I didn't know like yeah. what I was doing. Yeah. Really. Um, there was no tutorials on YouTube. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? You either had yeah. to find a mentor, yeah. or you had to get, uh, or you had to go to a school or something. Yeah, to learn it. Yeah. Yeah, to learn it. So I kind of well, I was self-taught. So I did a lot of trial oh, wow. and error. And figured that out. Yeah. So I figured out, okay, this is how, this is tempo. Oh, this is how you make yeah. these drums. This is so it took a lot of years of, of of messing up, but I eventually got into producing and started making my own beats. And I mean, I would do it every day after going to school. Yeah. So even in school, I would be trying to make beats or something. You know, bring my laptop. And, You're like secretly yeah, at lunch. Yeah, like, at lunch you know? with the headphones <laughs> and making the beats. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I really took an interest in producing music also and it's definitely yeah. something that helps uh me as an artist as well you know yeah. you don't have to go and branch out ask people for yeah beats. well and to, to to your effect it's like it's kind of a synonymous creative process right because it's like now you have your own lyrics that then you can kind of tune your beat into and it's not like having someone else kind of take a part of your soul in this song it's like you're, right. the whole song is like your soul represented in exactly. a singular form you know yeah exactly like even the instruments is like what i'm thinking you know mm -hmm. the melodies is what i'm thinking um I mean, the artists do probably do do that too, but they probably don't know the technical side of it. Yeah, yeah definitely. So this is definitely a technical and creative side. Yeah. yeah. Well, and so now it's like you have the two of the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, you gotta, <laughs> you, you gotta balance both, you know? Sometimes yeah. I get too technical, I'm like, yeah, I gotta go back to the creative side. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah. I mean, luckily though, you find a balance, right? And yeah. you're creating the songs that you are now. Um, fans, you have to tune in to his new single, Tsunami, um, as well as all the other stuff he has going on, his shows, um, other... Every Friday, just every Friday. Every you guys, Friday. Just every Friday. 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 <laughs> Tuesday, turn in here. Friday, tune into yeah. that. <laughs> You already know. Uh, <laughs> um, well, uh, thank you so much, Javo, for being on Fame of the Flame. I really appreciate you. I appreciate out. you having me here, and mm -hmm. I hope the best for you too. And thank thank you. you for having me. Yeah, on. it's my pleasure. Um, and Jay, you know, Amina Labs always keeps it lit. You're always a real one, so thank you so much. Um, well, fans, until next time, I'm Noelle at Noelle's Notions, and this is Fame by the Flame with Yavo. Yavo, Tsunami Gang. Hey, got a new album coming out soon. Just love all the fans.